Wentz Financial Group presents Zips Basketball Weekly with John Gross. Investment management for your lifetime. Hosted by Joe Dunn. Contributing sponsors include Summa Health. It's your health. Let's own it together. Hilton Akron Fairlawn, the preferred hotel of Zips Athletics. And the Spaghetti Warehouse, famous for its 15-layer lasagna. Again, everyone, welcome to another edition of Zips Basketball Weekly with head coach John Gross, brought to you all season long by the Wentz Financial Group. Well, it was a week of peaks and valleys for the Zips, a tough road loss Tuesday night at Bowling Green. Then they bounced back Saturday afternoon with one of their best performances of the season, a 13-point road win against the Bulls. Right now, the Zips are 22-7 and 12-4 and and in the Mid-American Conference. Coach, a very emotional week. It didn't start that well, but it ended great. It did. You know, obviously, February in league play, Joe, anything can happen. Yep. You're playing these teams most of the time. It's a second time, and I've always said familiarity breeds contempt. And, uh, you know, obviously, very competitive, great games. Uh, you've got to uh, separate each, each of the games that you play and look at them as one-game entities. Yep. And that's hard, right? It's hard, especially when you're 18 to 22 years old. But, you know, we didn't play particularly well on Tuesday night. You know, give Bowling Green a lot of credit. I thought they were terrific. Um, but we kind of viewed it as a gut punch. You know, he yep. told the guys, said, hey, it's either a gut punch or a knockout punch. What's it going to be? And, of course, knowing the character of our team and who we are inside that locker room, you know, I think all of us that are close to a program felt like it was going to be a gut punch, a wake-up call for us, and that we would play better, uh, obviously, on Saturday. And we did. We put together one of our best performances of the year. Coach, you told me a great story. Romeo Travis, we're going to honor Friday night before the Kent State game. He came in and talked to you a little bit this week after the Bowling Green game, kind of pumped you up a little bit. He did. You know, he's the one that kind of gave me the concept of gut punch versus knockout yeah. punch. He said it a little bit different way, but, you know, I thought it was very, very appropriate. And, uh, you know, Romeo obviously is a huge part of our tradition. I'm glad we get to honor him on Friday night. Yeah. Uh, Well-deserved. But, uh, yeah, we're, as coaches, we're always listening and trying to pick up different things. You know, so much of this is psychology as much as anything. It's mental. You know, the mental is to the physical. Sometimes this time of year is yeah. three is to one, four is to one. You know, so you've got to – you know, you've got to attack the mind as much as anything else and try to be on edge. And, you know, I thought that was really appropriate based on what we went through on Tuesday night. Uh, we went through a lot of different uh, emotions during the game. I thought in the Bowling Green game, you know, we didn't make shots. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we went five for 35 from three. We don't typically do that. I thought they were good looks. And then it started to affect our poise a little bit right. uh, for the first time. And so I thought the gut punch versus knockout fr uh, punch phrase was appropriate, and I think the guys really latched onto it heading into Saturday's game against Buffalo. Right now, let's go back to Bowling Green this past Tuesday night, pick up highlights of that tough loss to the Falcons. And, Coach, the one thing I noticed, I'll tell you, the offense was running perfectly. You were getting great looks, as good a looks as you've got all season long. The ball just wasn't going in. Yeah, no, especially early, Joe. I thought our execution and what we had scripted and what we wanted, it felt like everything was creating good shots for us that we were calling. Uh, we just didn't make them, yep. um, you know, and then obviously defensively, I thought it allowed us to hang in there early because our defense was really good. But then as we continued to shoot poorly, you know, I thought we tied the defensive effort and details yep. uh, to how we were shooting the ball offensively. Obviously, you don't want to do that. And it's really the first time we've done that uh, all year uh, to that level. So great lesson for us to learn about how to handle those situations and how to handle adversity. You know, so much of, of athletics is about taking life lessons from this. So, you know, not only was Tuesday night a basketball lesson, but it was also a life lesson about how to respond appropriately to events that happen and do the best you can to, con try, to try to control yep. the next outcome. I was waiting for a run in that first half, Coach. It never came. You were down early 16-9. to nine. You're down 9 with 7.30 left in the half, and then down 14 with 3.11 to go. Just never got that one run to get you back in it in that first half. No, I never quite got over the hump, and we just kind of hung around until, you know, late it got away from us a little bit there. 
uh, about two-thirds of the way through the game, and then we fought back a little bit. But, you know, poise is so important, you know, because you're going to get dealt things during the game that you can't control. And we've been a team all year that's had great poise, especially on the road. I mean, you don't win nine games away from home playing the schedule we right. played if you don't have poise and some mental toughness. But it was a little bit lacking on Tuesday night. Great lesson for all of us. Felt like we were able to get that back uh, as we headed into Saturday's game against Buffalo. You were down by 15 at halftime, Coach, but you still had 20 minutes left to play. Then Bowling Green comes out in that second half, early in the second half, and really puts it away. Yeah, they did. They got up by 21. Yep. And then, you know, obviously we fought back a little bit, got it back in the teens. But more than anything, I, again, I, I know I keep referencing the mental. It's such a mental game as much as anything else. And so it was a good check for us from the standpoint of we always talk to them about check up from the neck up. And we needed that. Uh, we needed that checkup, and I think if we approach it the right way, it could be a great lesson for us that could allow us to play even better basketball moving forward. You said the Zips got a little bit frustrated in that second half. It's got to be frustrating as a coach, too, to watch those open looks and nothing going down. Sitting yeah, there watching that. you know, and I imagine if you're the player. Exactly. You know, but I, I've always felt like a frustrated student athlete or a frustrated player is going to be a low-performing player. There's a difference between being disappointed and being frustrated. You can be disappointed, but you got to move on and yeah. have a next play mentality and learn and move quickly. For the, again, for the most part, we've done that all year, but we did not do that as well on Tuesday night. And I think it shows our guys that it's not just an automatic. You know, it doesn't just show up. You have to make that conscious choice mentally. Your mindset affects your behavior. Lauren Christian Jackson with the first of two 35-point performances. He had 35 against Bowling Green. He was awesome in that second half. Tried to no, put the team terrific. on his back. Yeah, no, he was terrific offensively. He was the one thing, obviously, that we had going that night. We just needed a little bit more. Usually we're a little more well-rounded and blended. And, you know, Banks and Williams didn't make shots yeah. like they usually do. And then, obviously, Cheese had one of those nights that was up and down and was in foul trouble. And, so, uh, you know, great, again, great lesson for us. And uh, we were able to move on, obviously. And we'll take a look at Buffalo here in a second. Exactly. What do you say to the team after a performance like that? Coach, you go in the locker room, they're down. Uh, what do you say to them? Well, honestly, I think the biggest thing is when we got back. We just said, hey, look, fellas, we're not, we're not going to show clips from this game. It's yeah. the first time we did it all year. That's not us. We're moving on. We're preparing for Buffalo. All eyes on Buffalo. And let's get back to playing you know, obviously Akron basketball. The only thing we talked about was that, hey, we've got to have more poise yeah. than what we had uh, when adversity hits. That's who we are, and we've got to get back to being that, and I thought we were able to do that against Buffalo. We're going to watch that Buffalo tape a little bit. We're going to take a break, come back with two very special guests, so don't go away. We're back right after this. The difference with Wentz Financial Group is that we did not have a cookie-cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. Every day is completely different in the market, and every client situation is unique. We value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group. Investment management for your lifetime. I'm here. This isn't a stop on my way somewhere else. This is my way up. This city, this university. Akron is where I learn to outwork and outsmart. To aim high, then raise the bar. Because Zips never settle for less. No entitlement, no excuses, just my education. My future. I'm on the rise and we are Akron. Okay, welcome back to Zips Basketball Weekly. And Coach, we got two uh, special guests today. Why don't you do the honors and introduce these two guys because you're very close to both of them. No question. We've got Dustin Ford, our associate uh, head coach, and then obviously John Lenton, who's, you know, Wentz Financial does so much they for do. us, and the sh not only the show, but even beyond that. But for us, it's a little bit beyond that. We have a personal relationship with sure. both John uh, and Bud Wentz, who John will yep. talk about here. So we're just grateful to have them on today and excited that they're with us. John, welcome to the program. Tell us a little bit about the Wentz Financial Group because you guys have been so involved, the coaches said, and all across the board, and we're glad to have you here today. Tell us about the Wentz Financial Group. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, we, um, it, it's been nice. I mean, Bud is a, a graduate of the University of Akron, yeah. so he's very passionate about the university and the athletic department. So that's kind of where I got my introduction. Um, and then, you know, we value relationships very uh, deeply in, in both work and personal. And we have a great relationship with Coach, with Dustin, 
uh, with all the coaching staff uh, yeah. as well as all the student athletes. And you know, at Once Financial Group, we're just trying to um, help them achieve their vision uh, as long as ours is, is to get Akron to be one of the best mid-majors uh, in the NCAA. So just try to help them any way we can. Every time I see Bud, I kid him a little bit. You guys are right down there next to the bench. You're almost like <laughs> assistant coaches down there, right? How much fun is that? Yeah, it, it's uh, it's pretty pretty entertaining. There's some good stories that we get uh, coming out of there of, uh, of the interaction between the coaches, uh, interactions with referees, and uh, interactions with players. So. That's a great seat. It's uh, it's a special one to be at. Exactly. You get uh, to meet the players. Of course, you know the coaches. That's got to be uh, quite an experience. It's great. I mean, like I said before, and, and Coach met, mentioned about it, um, Bud and, and the whole uh, company in general. You know, we value those relationships that we make, and you know that's you know whether it's with the coaches or with the players. Um, you know, it's a great group of kids. Um, they're very uh, receptive <clears throat> to any uh, meeting that we have, and. Uh, we've just had a great time uh, trying to grow the program. Coach, I guess the next question to you, do you ever get any tips from those guys from the Wentz Financial Group? <laughs> oh, sure. A tight game, a tight <laughs> need to play. You ever yeah, call you talking on? about securities or are you talking about <laughs> basketball? A little of both. Quite a little bit of both, right? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no, it's a blast having them down there. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, we talked about already the professional piece, but also the personal piece. We enjoy having them down there and interacting with them. It makes the, uh, makes the game experience more fun. Exactly. Let's bring in associate head coach Dustin Ford. and. Coach, uh, you have been uh, with John Gross, I mean, he said 17 years, and I watch you. Uh, <laughs> Actually, 12. Sometimes 12. if you ask him, he's he like 20. He meant it seems like 17. <laughs> seems like 17. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I, I watch you guys interact every game. I'm right across the floor. Uh, you're making substitutions. You're, you're conferring with the coach. This is a team. This is a team within the team with you guys coaching. Yeah, no doubt. Our staff is really, really tight. I think we have a great relationship, all of us, the way we communicate. Coach obviously spearheads that, does a great job yeah. leading us, letting us know what he expects of us, when he expects it. And I've been with him long enough. I normally can probably, in his mind, know what he's thinking, which sure. obviously helps. Um, but our staff, it's a great staff to work with, and our players have been a great group to coach. Of course, you played at Ohio University. Your dad was a great high school coach in the state of Ohio. What about this year's University of Akron team, or what about the Mid-American Conference in comparison to other years you've seen? Uh, obviously, you know, every year you always say it, our league's really good, you know, and I, I, this year is no different. I think it's a thing where the top, the, from the top of the league to the bottom of the league, as we saw yesterday, anyone oh, yeah. can beat anyone on any given day. Right. Uh, Cleveland's going to be a lot of fun when we get there. Glad we got the bye to get there. Yes. But uh, the, the league's tough, and the league has great players. It's one of the best leagues in the country, regardless of location, Midwest, West, whatever, doesn't matter. The league is a really good league. Coach, I've seen you interact uh, not only with uh, Coach Ford, but your other assistant coaches. You, you really uh, have a great group. We do. We have a terrific group. It's as good as any staff that I've had. Yeah. Uh, I think we're really connected. No different than a team being connected. Your staff has to be connected. You know, and obviously everybody ha adds value in different ways and plays different roles. All the roles are valuable, and they play them really, really well. So I'm really, really blessed. We have a great staff. You know, obviously, Dustin, our families, we've all been together through this now at Ohio, Illinois, and yeah. Akron. So, you know, we, uh, my wife saw a clip the other day of one of my buddies and his assistant coach kind of going at it. She said, you and Dustin do that all the time. <laughs> yes, daily in the office. So it's, it's, yeah. like, it's, it's like, uh, you know, it's almost like we're, we're, we're brothers. And the thing I appreciate the most is he can say things to me sure. that, you know, are pretty direct. And, and uh, we don't take it personal. Uh, we all want the same thing uh, for our program for our student athletes, and then obviously for our families. Uh, Dustin cares a lot about his family, I care a lot about mine, yep. and we care a lot about each other's family. So uh, we always know that that takes precedent, but uh, when we're in the heat of the battle, you know, we're working and trying to find a way to either get a stop or get a score, you know, one possession at a time. And, uh, you know, so we, I'm glad that uh, he's with us. Our whole staff does a great job of really connecting into what we need to get done on a daily basis, and really a pleasure to work with him. Exactly. Well, John, thanks for coming today. I hope to see you up in Cleveland. Yep, thanks Let's for having us. We'll, we'll, up there. we'll be there for sure. We'll see you Tuesday thanks night you. for that big game with Ohio. We're going to take a, a quick break, come back with highlights of that big win over Buffalo Saturday afternoon right after this. Roman was born with a hole in his heart. But thanks to the experts at SUMA who found the problem and fixed it quickly, he's feeling 26 again. Not 76. Minimally invasive heart procedures, many performed in under two hours. Summa Health, vital for getting back in the game and more.
Okay, welcome back to Zips Basketball Weekly with head coach John Gross. Coach, we're going to talk and look at the highlights from that big win over Buffalo, but let's, let's set the stage right now. You're playing without Tyler Cheese. You're on the road, almost 6,000 fans at Buffalo cheering against you, against one of the best teams in the league. That was a great win. Yeah, no, it really was. And then we had Reac in more foul trouble right. than we needed him to be in, Reese a little bit. We had to over, and then the start to the game. You know, they get out 8 0, 13 4. Uh, crowd gets loud. You know, I thought we went back to being that team that showed a lot of poise and composure all year. Exactly. You know, we nitpicked on that earlier at Bowling Green because that's what it was. But I thought we learned from it. Uh, we adjusted pretty quickly. And on Saturday, we got back to being Akron, having some poise and composure yep. and togetherness in the midst of adversity. I thought that we were really resilient. And we had several guys make plays. Oh, yeah. thought our bench energy was great throughout the game. Everybody was really positive. And then the nine guys who played, Joe, every guy made some type of winning play during that game that allowed us to win the game. So cr contributions from everybody. I thought our, our bench was great. I yes. thought our two young guys, Tribble and Ali, really played particularly well uh, in extended minutes. It was great to get them extended minutes, play that well, and win this time of year because that could be good for us moving forward. Exactly. Right now, let's go back to Buffalo this past Saturday afternoon. Watch highlights of this big zip win. Coach, I think it was your seventh road win in the conference, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, which is a testament to our guys' uh, toughness. You know, just our toughness, our togetherness, and our poise. Things don't go well early, Coach. They come out. They hit their first four shots. They go up uh, eight to nothing. You're down 13 to uh, four again, 32-24. Uh, then you come back with the, I think the second half of that uh, first 20 minutes. You really played well. Really played well. I thought our quality of shot was really good. Guys played together. Defensively, we executed our game plan well. Thought we really competed on the backboard, yes. Joe. I thought that was a real key. If you remember b dating back to game one where they beat us here at home, they really brutalized they us on the backboard. So we were able to really not only compete but out rebound them in game two. And that was a big deal in terms of our ability to have a chance to win the game was to be great on the glass. It was good to see Zarius Williams, uh, Coach, uh, bounce back. Uh, he gave you the first lead of the game on a three-pointer. Uh, I think 425 left in the first half. You lead 33-32, but he did a lot of good things. Another double-double. Yeah, no question. I thought he did a lot of great things. I thought he executed well defensively his role. And then obviously was terrific on the glass. Finished twos well, step up, made, stepped up yep. and made free throws. Uh, did some really good things for us. He's a multi-dimensional player, so he can affect the game in a lot of different facets. We are down by one at half, Coach, 38-37, but I saw you leave the court at halftime. You were happy right now. Your team was playing well. Yeah, we had played well, and I felt like, obviously, that we at that point, I thought it was anybody's game. Exactly. And we had kind of battled and overcome the beginning of the game where you mentioned them making their first four shots, yeah. and we took a pretty good gut punch early and uh, responded well to that. Felt like we had played well, uh, made a few adjustments at halftime, and came out, and I thought played even better in the second half. So second half, Coach, uh, you trade leads uh, with the Bulls. You're up by four, up by five. Buffalo comes back, and the game is tied at 66 with 7.53 left to play. Then you go on, I think, a 17-4 to run to win the game and close it out. Yeah, obviously spearheaded by our defense. When yeah. we defend, our guys know it. Uh, you know, we can play with and beat anybody, okay? And then, obviously, that allowed us to get out and transition. And then offensively, in addition to transition and multiple players making plays, I thought Christian Jackson was just oh. dynamite, you know, in the second half, really throughout the course of the game. But leading us and really making plays for himself and for others uh, throughout the second half was, a, was just a brilliant performance by him. It was. It was amazing. Oh, uh, about 6,000 fans at Buffalo, and really, I'm, I'm trying to remember, I don't think they ever got into the game. I think they were mesmerized by Lauren Christian Jackson and what he did. Yeah, other than the beginning when yeah. they got off to that great start, you know, and it got pretty loud in there, and, and things started to look very optimistic for them as the game wore on, and we kept swinging and fighting yeah. and clawing and scratching, and, you know, I thought that uh, the crowd was – you know, in it, out of it, in it, out of it, back and forth, we were able to kind of stymie that a little bit. I talked to you after the game, Coach. Uh, I thought you had two great out-of-bound calls. Uh, kinda, I'm not sure if they were ad-libs, you practice or not, but you set up two plays that worked beautifully. No, it shows you how, and obviously we're an older team. You know, the two or three ATOs there in the second half we kind of had in our hip pocket, but only one of them that we ran at all, period, okay. in a game or practice. So it was something we saw and we wrinkled it a little bit, but... 
you know, you've got to have good players to be able to do that. Yeah. They've got to be able to execute and be able to think on the fly. And usually older teams have that have that knack for being able to do that. So give our players credit for the shot making on those plays and the execution and their ability to lock in focus and make a couple adjustments and wrinkles to what we would normally do. Exactly. Great win on the road for the Zips. Uh, trip to Cleveland. Obviously, it's going to be a big game, and we've got two more to talk about this week. We're going to take a break, come back with our Player of the Week and our Player on the Rise right after this. The difference with Wentz Financial Group is that we do not have a cookie-cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. Every day is completely different in the market, and every client situation is unique. We value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group, investment management for your lifetime. I'm here. This isn't a stop on my way somewhere else. This is my way up. This city, this university, Akron is where I learn to outwork and outsmart. To aim high, then raise the bar. Because Zips never settle for less. No entitlement, no excuses, just my education. My future. I'm on the rise, and we are Akron. So right now it's time to name our Player of the Week and our Player on the Rise. And Coach, our Player of the Week, that was kind of easy choice, wasn't it? No, it sure is. I mean, he's been dynamic uh, all year long and was great this week and, you know, tried to will us a little bit at Bowling Green offensively when we weren't hitting on all cylinders and then, you know, obviously had just a terrific performance uh, at Buffalo. And, uh, you know, everyone's going to see the 35 and the 6-6, six and six, and obviously that, that grabs your attention. But it's bigger than that. It's the, it's the leadership. It's the, you know, extension of what we want done out there. It's the poise. It's his ability to connect with his teammates um, and lead. So I, I, I just thought from that standpoint, uh, just a terrific performance when we had dealt with some adversity through last week, heading into that game on the road, did a great job. He did. He was fun to watch those last uh, two games. How about our player on the rise? 6'8 freshman. His name is Ali Ali out of Kendallville, Indiana. Coach, he continues to give you quality minutes. Boy, did he make some plays yes, in that did. Buffalo game. Just effort play. Some of them showed up on the stat sheet, obviously, with the scoring and the rebounding, but a lot of them didn't. And then his ability to defend the dribble and be in the right place defensively and play with toughness on that end was just tremendous. Uh, big part of our future, but boy, is he getting better fast, and it's great to be able to have that type of depth this time of year. Two uh, home games to close out the regular season. Tuesday night, Ohio University comes to town. That'll be a 7.30 tip-off Tuesday night. Then Friday night, arch-rival Kent State. That'll be at 6.30. So two big games this week, Coach. Two huge ones. Great for Zips Nation, the community, the university. Our players have put yeah. themselves in this position. Let, let's have some fun this week and get everybody out to the games. You know, obviously, we've got a really special senior class that yes. we'll be honoring on Friday. And... Uh, We'd love to have that, that thing packed both games this week, Tuesday and Friday. Exactly. Senior night on Friday, also honoring former Zip great Romeo Travis. Hope to see you there on Tuesday and Friday. For head coach John Gross, I'm Joe Dunn. And always remember, go Zips. Wentz Financial Group presents Zips Basketball Weekly with John Gross. Investment management for your lifetime. Hosted by Joe Dunn. Contributing sponsors include... Summa Health, it's your health. Let's own it together. Hilton Akron Fairlawn, the preferred hotel of Zips Athletics. And the Spaghetti Warehouse, famous for its 15 layer lasagna. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.